Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to uh, another chapter of Celebrating Acts 2 with our contributing editor for all things medical, Dr. Liz Lister. Welcome. Well, welcome, Dr. Liz. Good to see you again. Likewise. Thank so you. our question today is about male menopause. I, uh, I know a lot of guys who don't believe in it. Uh, tell me, I know the, the symptoms must be different because after all, uh, we don't get hot flashes, or at least I didn't. Well, we don't. We pretend uh, that we don't. <laughs> or we pretend that we don't. We go out and buy a, a Corvette instead. <laughs> but really, what what are the symptoms that we should look for for male menopause? How does it affect men? I love this question. First of all, to your point just now, you're exactly right. Women go through the change or going into menopause. It's much more clear, and the symptoms that people know about are the hot flashes, the night sweats. However, apart from, in, in addition to that, for women, are a lot of symptoms with a lot of overlap with men as well. And that includes fatigue, weight gain, despite doing everything else the same. Men notice that. Cognitive changes. Not people start to worry, you know, am I am I getting dementia? Am I losing my mind? But it just starts as just a little bit forgetful. That has a hormonal influence. And also uh, mood changes that affects men as well. All right. So lots of overlap for those symptoms. Well, that's interesting. Um, so I can't blame my weight gain on the lack of exercise. It's my menopause. <laughs> You only Funny hope. you should you... mention that because you exercise is a lot more beneficial for men than it is for women in terms of weight loss. Exercise is good for us all. However, for women, it's not the key to losing weight as much as it is for men. So the def there are differences. We are not exactly the same. So, so since you have a practice uh, that includes a, a number of male patients. Uh, how do they wind up showing up at your door? What triggers them to uh, find, to seek you out and look for uh, some th hormonal therapy or other solutions? 80% of healthcare is driven by women. And that's just as true with men coming to see me. A lot of times it'll be the husband of one of my patients or the brother or someone that they have enough of a connection with that they can say, look, you're not feeling well, you're not sleeping well, you're feeling tired, you're forgetful, it could be related to your hormones. And, and I know a doctor you should go see. So it's often through a woman, sometimes men do find me directly, which is to their credit. Uh, so th so that's how it, it breaks down like that. I have a, another uh, question. Um, uh, because uh, while we primarily address uh, an audience that is 50 and over, uh, many uh, yeah. of our people are on Medicare already. Uh, is this something that's covered by uh, medical plans or uh, particularly for our people by Medicare? The testing is usually covered. The blood work that I do and doctors vary. All right. So one thing that I think is actually a good piece of news is that a, it, it's more common for regular doctors who do accept Medicare and other insurances. I don't bill any insurance in my practice at all. I just don't see a, vol, a high volume of people in a day. I spend anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half with my patients. So I don't deal with insurances at all. However, there's a lot of doctors, who, especially for men, who will look at these questions, look at these issues, measure a testosterone level. And there's two points that I want to say out there to, to people listening, it, to, to your listeners, is that when there is a test, any kind of test that's done by a regular doctor, you want to make sure that you're aware not just of the reference range of the lab results, but you want to know what's optimal. 
And testosterone level is a perfect example. It's one of the very top examples of what I'm talking about. So I often see men who, you know, the range for testosterone level at a regular lab might be anywhere from 200 up to 1,000. And you don't want, if your level's at 250 and you're not feeling good and you're feeling any of those symptoms we were talking about, don't let the doctor tell you, oh, you're fine, and they just check off the box and you're normal, okay? Because optimal is going to be, people disagree and there's differences of opinion of what level should men have. But what I observe is that most men feel good when their level is at least above 600. Wow. I, I don't even know what my levels are. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't, but your doctors probably be happy to check it. This is great information. Great information. Well, last question for me is, do women understand and appreciate male menopause because it, it since it's not so obvious do, do you find most women discounted or don't understand it is it is is it as obscure to women as it is to men since we're basically jerks anyway you know do they just consider <laughs> well, well, we're another phase of being a jerk i don't think that art so we we can't go there well let me let me say one piece that's so for you know what first I'll ask answer your question is that I'll, it's a little hard for me to answer because the women that that get to all the way to seeing me they're already pretty savvy as far as the importance of hormones and hormone balance and they do realize by the time they get to me their research has shown them what we what we know which is that testosterone levels for men gradually decline throughout the whole lifespan, all right? And a lot of people think that testosterone causes anger and raging, but that's only if it's being really overused or abused. In normal dosing, testosterone does the opposite. It calms us down, men and women. It helps, so the grumpy old man stereotype is actually a man with a really low testosterone level. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Great information has, uh, has given me a completely new perspective. It's important for your health too, for you as men and for men to realize that testosterone is just really good for us. It's good for men. It's good for women as well. How, because it just has so many impacts, but low testosterone in men is associated with increase incidence of a variety of health problems, including prostate cancer. That's a whole, we can have a whole discussion sometime just about wow. that. Yeah, it's very yeah, interesting. We definitely should, we definitely should. Uh, so, but that's for another time. Right, in the meantime, if some people want to um, uh, get more information about your practice and perhaps getting in touch with you, they can go to uh, drlizmd.com. Uh, they can also find you on Facebook. They can also find you on LinkedIn. Um, and and buy and buy your books and buy your books, okay? Absolutely. Which I can get on Amazon, correct? Correct. And through my website, you can get signed copies through my website, or it's on Amazon. Okay. Uh, and uh, speaking of an amazing place to go, uh, John, where can people go on, let's say, YouTube, to uh, binge watch uh, our Doctor Liz series? How about celebratingact2.com? <laughs> slash slash oh no youtube.com YouTube. Dot dot com slash celebrating act two and while they're there just to feel better maybe to raise their testosterone just a bit they should hit the subscribe button it'll make them feel better <laughs> unless you're a woman and then we'll it'll make them feel better too anyway we don't know you know join also okay <laughs> good anyway thanks, thanks liz thank you see you soon bye-bye my -bye. pleasure For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.